In this video, you're going to learn how to obtain the full and dense Jacobian matrix using reverse mode automatic differentiation involving vector Jacobian products in the JAX deep learning framework. Let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video. We will look at the vector valued function f that maps from a four-dimensional input x to a three-dimensional output u. I have here a random evaluation point, so something where we can query this function on. This, of course, has to be four-dimensional. If we apply the function to it, then we will get a three-dimensional vector out. In this video, we are interested in Jacobians. Jacobian are the collection of derivatives of all the output of the function with respect to the input of a function. So you could also call it df by dx. In our numerator layout, it will be output shape by input shape. So it will be three by four dimensional. There is a convenience function in JAX in order to obtain it. It's called jack reverse using reverse mode automatic differentiation, applying it to a function, performing a function transformation, and then calling it on the evaluation point gives us the three by four dimensional matrix. In this video, we are interested in obtaining this using reverse mode automatic differentiation, or more precisely, vector Jacobian products. Vector Jacobian products are the primitives of reverse mode AD. A vector Jacobian product can be viewed of as taking a vector A, transposing it and then left multiplying it with the Jacobian matrix df by dx. So we build a Jacobian matrix, evaluate it at the evaluation point, and then left multiply it with vector transpose. Of course, this is just how it works conceptually. Under the hood, vector Jacobian products don't explicitly build the matrix, but allow us to query the result of this product easily. Let's take a simple example, and for this we have to define a left multiplication point, so basically a vector we want to multiply with from the left. Let's take some arbitrary collected numbers, so let's for instance use 0 0.5, 0 0.8 and 1.0. Then we have to first call the function jax.vjp on our function f as well as the evaluation point, and then this returns the output y as well as a vjp function. And so we execute it. Y essentially is just as if we would have called the function on the evaluation point. And VJP will be a closure function that allows us to evaluate this vector Jacobian product. In the terminology of JAX, this evaluation point is called the primal because that is at least conceptually the point at which we evaluate the Jacobian matrix. If we now call the VJP function on our left multiplication point, this returns a tuple where we only have one entry, and this entry is then a four-dimensional vector, the result of the vector Jacobian product. And also be very careful, the left multiplication point has to match the shape of the output, so the y. In other words, it has to be three-dimensional, and the result of the VJP function will be four-dimensional. And it of course makes sense. Our Jacobian matrix in the numerator layout, in our case here, is three by four dimensional. And if we left multiply a three dimensional vector, this would result in a four dimensional vector as a result of this multiplication. Okay, so far so good, but how can we now use the vector Jacobian product in order to obtain the full and dense Jacobian matrix? And here we will use the property that if we left multiply a matrix with the unit vector, we are extracting a certain row out of it. For this, let us define the unit vector to be the vector of all zeros except for one entry. I will first create a zero vector and here I will hard code three because it has to be three dimensional. And then we use the JAX array mutation approach to set its zeros entry to 1.0. And if we then take the look at a unit vector, it's 1, 0, 0. And if we now query the VJP function on this unit vector, we will get the following result. So again, a tuple, but it's first or zero of entry is consisting of these numbers. Interestingly, these numbers are the same as if we get it from the full Jacobian. So let's apply Jack reverse on F. And then on the evaluation point, we see that these numbers are identical to the zero of row of our Jacobian matrix. And hence, if we use a unit vector which has the one in the first or second component, depending on how you view it, we will get the next row and so on and so forth. So basically, we can loop over the number of rows in order to get them and then concatenate the rows into the Jacobian matrix. Well, let's do this and implement a corresponding function. I want to call this 
my reverse Jacobian and this shall take a function as well as an x and of course we should use a colon here then we first query the function or query it by the help of a vjp so we get a y an output as well as the vjp function by calling jax.vjp on the function on x so we will make somehow function transformation into the closure the vjp function as well as the result y we are not interested in the numeric values of y we just want to use it in order to deduce the number of rows of our jacobian because the number of rows are identical to the length of the output vector well then let's create a list and call it the jacobian rows in which we want to collect them and then we would have also needed to prepare the unit vector but here we already have it in global scope so i don't want to do that again then let's loop over the rows by saying for i in range of n rows and then we can compute the row by calling the vjp function on the unit vector but using such would just give us like the zero row because we would be using the unit vector or the same unit vector over and over again so we can use the jnp dot roll functionality in order to periodically roll the unit vector and we're using an offset here so you can think of it as if i is zero, then we have the unit vector in the zero of dimension. And then we have if i equals one, we have the zero vector in the first dimension, so on and so forth. And thereby we are extracting the rows. Since the VJP function is returning a tuple, I'm using a comma behind the row in order to automatically extract it, since there is only one entry in the tuple, which is this one row. Then let's use the Jacobian rows list and append the row to it and that's already our loop then we can get the jacobian by using chain p dot stack of the jacobian rows over axis being zero because we want to stack over the rows then we can return the jacobian and that's already our function let's try to evaluate it my reverse jacobian on the function f as well as the evaluation point. And here we see we get our three by four dimensional matrix, but is it also the correct implementation? Let's compare it with the Jack reverse one and see if we get the same results. And those are identically the same. And that's of course, because internally Jack reverse of Jacks uses the same approach in order to obtain the Jacobian. There are some performance considerations here with respect to batching over the rows with which you can like improve the computational efficiency of obtaining Jacobians. However, and that's really important, you will never beat the complexity and the complexity will be linear in the number of rows. So if we had a function with many more outputs than just three, let's say a hundred, we would need 100 loop iterations. And these are the costly parts, even if you batch them. So using the reverse mode automatic differentiation on Jacobians is linear in the number of rows, but constant in the number of columns. Also check out my next video where I will go into more detail on how to use the batching approach in order to improve the computational efficiency and also take a look on how the reverse mode compares to the forward mode. And also be advised that in a lot of sensitivity methods and other approaches, one usually does not need the full Jacobian matrix. Rather, one just needs the vector Jacobian product. And then of course, it would be rather stupid to build up the full matrix with vector Jacobian products, just such that you then left multiply something to it where you could have used the vector Jacobian product from the beginning. Though there are still some applications where one is interested in full Jacobian matrices, for instance, Gauss-Newton optimization methods and some other stuff. I hope you enjoyed this little continuation on the vector Jacobian product and how to use it in order to obtain concrete derivative estimates. A big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. So feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of such content like on automatic differentiation and adjoint methods. Here you will now find similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.